So in this video, we're going to check out the new version of the Shelly One Plus or Shelly Plus. I don't know. It's just the new Shelly One. I know we've all loved the Shelly One OG for doing like the cool stuff of garage doors. This is um, cool and stuff. We're going to check out the new Shelly One. It has some cool features that I like and maybe one that I don't like. So we had the opportunity to check out the new Shelly One Plus and So in full disclosure, Shelly did send the Shelly One PM and the Shelly One Plus to me, but of course they didn't get any input into it and I wouldn't let them anyway because I just want to tell you if it's good or bad and just totally being biased like we always are. Now you may notice something a little bit different. They do have the Bluetooth logo on them. So at first thought, I was like, oh, did they change to the horrible type of new chip we were seeing in the Tuya devices? Because I do enjoy the Shelly for some things. Now, I know being in the U.S., they're not the easiest to put in the wall with some of the thicker wire and being solid. and But they're very versatile devices. And they are like stupid small. Now, I really enjoy using the Shelly one for the garage door option because it can be powered off of DC power. And I normally use them with 12 volt, the little 12 volt wall warts. So that's low voltage. You can use the reed sensor. You can, it already has a case. It has terminals. It's stupid simple to do. Now, this one has a little different pins on the back but we'll get to that it's a really great option i have done a video with the shelly one original with the garage door opener it's a great little project we'll leave that link down below if you want to check it out or maybe the low below that way i guess if your screen's upside down so i did want to look at we have the shelly one pm and the shelly one here and let's take a look at the previous models and just see what size difference. So you can see they're pretty much the same size, I mean, except they just have a little different form factor. I will have to say I like the look of the newer ones a little better. But one thing, well, let's take a closer look. I'm going to show you something. So on the previous Shelly, we had the ability to just take some regular DuPont jumpers. And this was for being able to put your third party firmware, such as TAS Motor, ESP Home on it. Now I know there's other integrations now that you can do these straight out of the box. And I do applaud Shelly for doing MQTT and everything straight out of the box without having to do the whole internet thing to make them truly local. I know, well, there's a company <clears throat> to you that doesn't understand that part. Maybe they can should look at you guys. But if you did want to do these, you could just put these jumpers in here and they would connect up. Now, luckily, Shelly does the same thing on this model. But you'll notice there's a big difference. The holes are stupid small. And even with some breadboard jumpers such as this, that's really just too big. I know I've seen some other options where, and I've done it myself, is take some Cat5, Cat6 wires, a solid core, and stick them in the holes, and then attach little alligator clips to it or something like that to flash them using the pins. So looking at this one, I did like that they did the actual wiring schematic and probably that does save them a lot of support issues as well because no one looks at manuals. I mean, we lose the manuals. We just want to look at the product. So pretty awesome job that they put the schematic straight on here. You can see easily that the neutral comes in here. The line comes in here for doing AC. It works off of 110, 240. When you do the 12 volt, do pay attention to the wiring that the 12 volt positive 
as shown in the manual. That's the only thing I can say I'll fault them for the schematic is the, they do a better job in the manual of actually showing the positive of the 12 volt DC needs to go here and the negative needs to go here. It's not really clear exactly on here the way it should go for doing DC. So if you get confused or whatever, just refer to the little manual. Now, the I and the O, this is one of the awesome things I like about this, is it's a dry contact. And it, what that means, it's just like a switch. It's not going, no matter if you're putting 12 volts to feed, 12 volts into it or 120 volts into it, it's not going to feed that power into the contact. All this does is whenever you tell it turn on, it connects these two terminals. So whatever type of signal or voltage or whatever, as long as it's within spec of the being able to hold the amperage, then you're good. You can connect it. It'll disconnect and connect that. So it's pretty cool being able to have that dry contact relay. So let's take a look inside this guy here and I'll show one of the problems I ran into. So you can just pry it open. They didn't glue it together. Pretty cool. It's actually comparing the new Shelly. Of course, the new form factor is this one here. You'll actually notice the relay is the same model number. Now, I guess due to differences and things have changed a little bit in printing, they look a little different, but it's the same model number. It's a 16 amp relay. Now, that's where things get a little different with the power supplies and whatnot. And then on the old model, we had to actually change this jumper over here for doing the 12 volt versus 120 or 240 AC. But of course that's not needed over here. They just have the different terminal. I do like that they've done that change here. The only one of course I don't like is they did away with the standard pin headers. I wish they would have done a little bit bigger pin headers because I actually broke mine trying to put breadboard jumpers in. So on the back of it, you can see they're doing isolation here for the mains AC there, which is cool, good things to see. And there's one cool thing I wanted to mention that I had mentioned till now about the ESP chip that is still on this device. We'll have to zoom in. And Enhance. That is an ESP32-U4WD. Now, if you watch the channel and you see my blog, we did a Linkine switch that was recently using that. That is a single core ESP32. So that's where they get the Bluetooth as well. So now you know you're probably asking, well, can we flash this? Absolutely. I have actually flashed this with Tasmoda and have it working. And I had the template and everything else you need in the description. It's really easy to flash. I did have to figure out the pin header up here. But again, I did mention I did rip off the pin header that was here, but I just soldered to there. I would recommend doing probably that little small wire to put in there. And I'll leave the pin header picture as well up on this frame but without the whole rippy part. And this is just part of the case here. That is actually the button. It's not really that useful in Tasmoda, but I guess if you really wanted to, you can still put it in the template, which it will be as the button. So if you want to do the 40 second reset, you can hold it for 40 seconds and set things to factory default. I'm seem to be overlooking it at this time. I think there it is right by that D1, let me see if I can fix the focus here a little bit. Yeah, there's a small little, I believe it was a red LED, and that's actually on GPIO zero. And you can see I ripped off one of the pads there, which sucked, but I was able to use one of the pads over here. It had continuity when I did the whole test to the actual chip to figure out the pinouts of things. So all in all, pretty cool for the Shelly One. I do like that they have stayed to ESP. That way we can do all the things with it. I don't think as of the recording that ESP Home supports this chipset, 
but they may in development or some type of beta but I didn't see it in the production one, but hopefully that'll come soon. So you can do your ESP home thing with this as well. Or just leave it the stock one. You know, that does do local or cloud or whatever you want to do. There's lots of options with this guy. So jumping to the Shelly 1 PM, which stands for power monitoring. Do pay attention on the diagram because this is not a dry contact relay. Do not use this with that door garage thing or whatever or thinking you can control something because once you put in that voltage, it flips the voltage into it and you'll end up frying it. Now, I haven't done it with DC voltage, but uh, maybe it does work. Of course, they put it on here. I just haven't done anything with it, but pretty cool to see they do that. So let's take a look inside. So they are using that 16 amp relay, power supply, the whole nine. I don't have a first model Shelly PM to compare it to, but I'm sure there's a bunch of pictures on the internet if you really want to look at the older model. Now the back, this is where things get different. Here's that pin header. Enhance please. It's really small for a bread board jumper to fit in. You can fit it in some of the holes, but if that little metal bracket is not lined up just right, it's not gonna fit. You end up breaking it just like I did. So I would probably do, if you're gonna use the pin header stuff on it for flashing it, and I will leave the diagram and stuff for that, of course, down in the description, or we'll put it up on the frame here. Editor, if only had an editor. Now they do have that same ESP32 chip, which is pretty awesome, but there's gonna be one additional chip as you see. And we'll see if we can zoom in a little closer. It looks like it's upside down. So I believe this is using, I recognize the numbers, BL0937, but I do believe this is supported by Tasmoda. So that will be cool to flash this one. I haven't flashed this one just yet. So of course a little layout is different because this one does the power monitoring thing. So pretty cool to see this as ESP32 because you can get your Bluetooth on with it too. So this is one of the cool things I like about Shelly. And listen up to you. I know you probably won't, but whatever. I'll just say my piece here. You notice I'm not using an app. I'm just using my web browser. All I simply did was powered up the Shelly 1PM Plus, whatever the Shelly device which also works just connected to the access point on it. And now I'm going to add it to my network with no app. Watch. And it's that freaking simple. I just added it to my Wi-Fi, put in my Wi-Fi and I'm done. And now going over and I'm on my Wi-Fi without any app. Love it. And guess what? They even have MQTT and you can turn off the cloud. Pretty awesome stuff. Revolutionary. Stop it. Get some help. So we're going to dig around and look at some things in the Shelly 1 PM Plus. I haven't seen this web interface. Now we can turn it on. We don't have any draw on it. That would show the wattage. Looks like the Bluetooth is enabled. I don't know what we can see with Bluetooth. Okay, so it's just to enable. MQTT. Okay, so you got to hit apply first. Interesting way. You have to hit apply and then it enables it. We have a device, the firmware. Let's check for an update. Available version. This is pretty cool. They've done a good job with this. There's a beta. There's available version. Let's go to beta, right? Um, schedules. Timers. Channel settings. Okay, so this is all the switch stuff. The flip, detached, follow. Kind of like your switch modes in Tasmoda invert switch max power protection because this does have power monitoring this is the pm one max voltage max current let's see if we can add the shelly integration interesting that's pretty cool i'll have to give them that that you can just integrate this into home assistant without doing any flashing stuff or whatever it's pretty neat um now one thing i want to try so I removed the power from it, and I want to see when this shows up as unavailable. Okay, so it still let me turn it on, even though it's not actually powered up. Okay, so it is finally showing unavailable. 
Okay, that, that does work. Now, if I turn back on, how quick does it come back? It's a little slower. So I was able to add, if you went into the entities and I was able to add those in where you got like the temperature and then the voltage, etc. Well, so that is the Shelly 1 into, that is the Shelly 1 PM into Home Assistant. Why did it shut off again? That's weird. Uh, we have sort of a problem here. It should be on. So that's strange. Home Assistant is showing it as unavailable, but it's still here. I can turn it off and on, I can hear it clicking. So the web GUI is still fine, but Home Assistant says it's unavailable. Maybe because it's too new, but this is one of the reasons why I like to flash my own third party firmware, such as Tasmodo ESP Home or whatever, and that's just gonna work and not have to deal with any special integration. And then I could still use Node Red or whatever and hit it with MQTT or straight from Tasmodo devices and use device groups, the whole nine yards. And see, it just came back for some reason when I was talking. And it's not falling off the Wi Fi because I've got another ping session over here. It's fine. And plus, we could still get to it on the GUI. Very weird. So I wanted to point out one thing I had an issue with. I checked out MQTT, but I don't see an option to set retains. Shelly had this issue before on the other ones, and they could never get it right until way past when they released it. And it looks like they got this one wrong again. So the issue is, when I see the online, it should be online, right? But there's no retain message. Well, you say, well, what does that matter? I'm going to turn off the device and then reconnect. So I've pulled the power and I don't have the status for it. So I won't know if that device is online or not. Now, if I power it back up, probably going to see one pop up down here. And there's the Shelly plus 1 p.m. But the problem with that is this is not true last will and testament because there's no retain. I don't see why this is that difficult for them to figure out. If they're going to put MQTT in, put it in right. Now, you shouldn't retain some of this other stuff, but you definitely need to retain the online true and then let the MQTT post the LWT of offline or off online equals false, whatever it posts. But of course, if you do flash Tasmodo on it, you won't have this problem And because LWT has worked for years on Tasmodo. So if there's some different things you'd like to see done with the Shelly, definitely let us know down below. I do like to do a lot of different things with the Shelly one in I guess, I don't know if they're still going to make the OG version. I, possibly not. I know given the whole chip shortage thing and whatever, and it probably makes much more sense just for them to go forward with the Shelly One Plus. But of course, I don't know their exact plans for that. Maybe they don't even know. So would I buy it over the Shelly One it depends really on the cost. I mean, I mean is, if it's not that much more, I probably would buy the Shelly One Plus. I mean, because it does get the ESP32 feature to it. Yeah, if you were using that in that garage, and it'd be really simple to add a Bluetooth little sensor that you could pick up with Tasmoda and pop it right in. It would come off of your garage door opener. Pretty cool little feature to have that Bluetooth. Now, I don't think at this time, now of course that could change rather quickly, that this chip would be supported by ESP Home because it is that single core version, the ESP32. And But I'm sure they'll get it supported in no time. Because I do like the Bluetooth features and feature set in ESP Home a little bit better than the Tasmoda set, which kind of makes sense given the way ESP Home is laid out. So I appreciate you watching. 
hanging out. Come hang out with us in Discord. And, yep, y'all know the drill. Goodbye. Um, press all the buttons and y'all take care.